Hello there. Uh, this is the review of the visual elements. Forget chapter three because this is from the old book. And in the new book, visual elements was in chapter four. But it has been forever since we've gone over these, and this was a very long chapter. And the test this coming weekend is based on this part, the visual elements, and then the videos I uploaded with the uh, elements of design and principles of design is what I uploaded just the other day. So I'm making this one so you can review uh, the elements of design together with me. And just a reminder, these are the building blocks. Line, shape, light, or value. Light and value are the same thing. Color, texture, and space whether it be the illusion of space in a two-dimensional piece of work or the use of actual space in a three-dimensional piece of work. So <clears throat> we went through, we started with line, which is what we all begin with as kids. We talked about actual line, which are real marks made on the page or real linear objects in a sculpture, um, whether that sculpture be made out of steel rods or or two befores or whatever, it doesn't matter. We talked about actual line in terms of the different types. Um, line weight, thin lines, thick lines. And we even went over, uh, this was also the section where I had you draw lines that were representative of abstraction. So what does an angry line look like? What does a strong line look like? What does a shy line look like? And all of these are taken into consideration by artists. Lines can show movement. Let me go full screen with this because this is kind of distracting having all this crap over here. So, uh, yeah. That's a little better. Okay, so lines to show movement. Okay, doesn't matter if the line has color or not, the line is a line. So we talked about actual lines, and then a subset of actual lines is something called gestural lines, which are used to get the impression and a quick snapshot of the gesture of something, whether it be human, animal, plant, or whatever. Something that is in motion, or can be in motion, something that is temporary it's good to use gestural lines to get that idea down and not be so stuck on little details to begin with again line not only used as shading but also showing action taking place in the background showing the movement of the hand um, line close together all these lines are the same thickness but if you get a bunch of them close together they become darker all kinds of different kinds of lines okay and then implied line now implied line is um, you know when we talk about implied line we talk about looks gazes pointing where there's no actual connection like this cross is an actual line okay those are real lines um, the physical body is an actual line, but looking, you know, we are animals of observation, and if we observe a bunch of people looking a certain direction, we'll look that way too, so that's an implied line, okay? Another example of gestural lines, uh, again, um, the detail of the clothing is just loosely thrown in, up and down, to show that there is an arm and there is cloth around it, but it's not really there to outline real cloth or to look real. It's just showing the form and space that the arm takes up. Now, each of the elements has a function. And these functions are usually the same. But for this case, um, lines can help us create shape over here on the right or mass, which remember mass refers to three-dimensional shapes. Um, 
you know, it takes up space. So that's one of the functions. Creation of movement. So again, you know, we have implied line. Yes, laser beams from the Virgin Mary. But then we have actual line, arms, legs, bodies, knee, toes, going up the shin, up the arm, actual line of the top of the cloak, lines back here, holding it together. Okay, so within the piece we have a lot of things ricocheting constantly, linear, linear, pointing, pointing, and going around in a big circle. Um, another function of line, of course, is creating a focal point, the drapery all pointing up. So, whoop, there's that. Um, focal point and showing movement. You know, the line here is everywhere lines line so line you know we're kind of beating a dead horse here but everything is linear except these are horizontal I mean except for these two guys which are keeping us right here using shape as line that's referring to the boats possibly to the buildings even the trees is a big thick line uh, the word line gets tossed around a little loosely so Okay. Creation of movement and expression. So expressive lines, lots of wiggles and movements. And you guys dissected this as a group, so you know about all the lines in this monster. Lines are also used in three dimensionality, uh, in th three dimensionality, three dimensional work to emphasize the dimensionality. So all of this drapery is accenting the fact that these are round if these were just smooth they could get lost in the sun you know these were made out of pure white marble they didn't have all these shadows and stuff on them so if it was a cloudy day they may be a little less contrasty so they made sure to really go all out with the drapery line is also used to build uh, Modeling, you have things like cross hatching and stippling in two dimensional art, you know, this constant back and forth. Which lines, the more you have, the more dense it gets, obviously, the more dark it is. Pretty common sense stuff. Uh, another word for modeling, which I don't remember if we went over it in class, is something called chiaroscuro. So, what I'm going to do is pull up that word. It is a old Italian word that basically means light and dark contrast chiaroscuro okay so it is an old school thing that again like I said it took 300,000 years for man to really uh, get their stuff together to figure out what they're talking about but it's just a fancy italian word for modeling and creating light and dark uh it is strong contrast okay so like this piece here very strong contrast to delineate form and light sources and things like that so that fancy little italian word is found in your book when we talk about the elements of design, where is my, there it is, couldn't find it for a second. Okay, back to live action. So line creating modeling or chiaroscuro. Another function of line is to create pattern and texture. So the small mark making of Van Gogh little small lines okay all pretty self-explanatory now we're on to the difference between shape and mass just a reminder shape is 2d mass refers to 3d okay so we don't need to know who made those things so the types of shape and mass 
naturalistic or representational, abstract, non-objective, non-representational, just like the first section of our class when we went over the three types of art. Okay. Now, geometric shapes are more abstract, okay, unless it's really made from geometry. Um, so geometric shapes used quite effectively, especially in design and forms of art like cubism, architecture, things of that nature. Organic is basically everything you see every day. It's taking the angles out of it, softening things. So very organic architecture. Uh, organic architecture still has some very crisp lines, but almost still very fluid, wobbly. And then biomorphic. This was that weird section of shapes and, and forms that are really attached to um, really deep biological things. And in the PowerPoint, which is on Moodle, I'm just blowing through it as a review. Um, this is the definition of biomorphism. Okay, so technically, it is still it's a sub subset of organic shapes. Okay, very organic shapes in some re, some uh, situations. And then this talks about negative space and negative shapes. Um, openings, whether they be in sculpture, architecture, or in drawing and painting, the negative space is just as important as the positive space. So we have examples of what is negative, what is positive, negative and positive space being used to do illustration. What's in the foreground, what's in the background, really? 